Daddy Pythagory, and I'm going to tell you all about the harmony of the spheres and how Pythagoras came up with it. Now there's something very important to remember when we talk about this. Pythagoras believed that all was number, and number was all. He saw order in nature and said that numbers were the language of nature. So don't forget to Pythagoras, nature equal number. Pythagoras believed that there was something very special about things that happened in fours. In fact, he had a list of ten very important things that came in fours. He believed that these sets of four were sacred. He called them the sacred tetractus. Remember, one plus two plus three plus four equals ten. And we all know that's an important number. One of these sacred tetractus were the elements, for example. Elements were sacred because at that time the elements were earth, air, fire, and water. One, two, three, four. Another type of number that Pythagoras became very interested in were the numbers of music. Some say that one day while Pythagoras was walking down the street, he heard different sounds coming from a blacksmith shop. He noticed that different sounds were made from different sized hammers. This may be what got Pythagoras interested in the math of music. Who knows why really, but anyways, he started doing lots of experiments. He filled different cups with different amounts of water to compare the sounds they made when you hit them. He also used different sized string to pluck to see what different sounds they made when you plucked them. Another thing he did was hit bells of different sizes. Do you see those numbers up there? They say 4, 6, 8, 9, 12, and 16. Pythagoras put these numbers on all of his experiments. It was a way of him keeping track of the different sounds things made in comparison to each other. These are called ratios. Ratios can be a bit confusing, so why don't I show you? These four strings are identical. The only difference is some of them are broken up into different numbers of pieces. The Pythagoreans did a very similar experiment, only they used one string and they moved a bridge-like tool along the string to create different ratios to get different sounds when they pluck the string. Look at this string at the top. It's one whole string. The string below it is exactly the same, except we've broken it up into two parts so that we can see the ratio. When I pluck the whole string, I will be plucking two parts. If I put my finger right in the middle and pluck, I will be plucking just one part. So when I pluck the whole string, I pluck two. When I pluck just one part, I pluck one. This will create a two part to one part or a two to one ratio. Let's listen. Lovely. This is what we call an octave. It's a two to one or a one to two ratio. The next string is broken into three parts. If I pluck the whole string, I pluck three parts. If I put my finger here, I will pluck just two parts. Let's listen as I pluck three parts, then two parts. That's beautiful. That's a two to three ratio. We know that as a fifth. The last string is broken into four parts. If I pluck the whole string, I pluck all four parts. If I pluck just the first three parts, it'll sound like this when I pluck both. Beautiful. At that time, 
the Greeks only realized these octaves, fifths, and fourths, which was a three to four ratio. These were the only harmonies they noticed. If you pluck them all together, perfect harmony. These are the numbers that harmony is based on. Do you notice anything about these numbers? Hmm? They're the numbers one, two, three, and four. Do you remember what's special about these numbers? They're part of the sacred tetractus. What? Pythagoras knew that all of music was based on these sacred numbers. Pythagoras knew that nature equaled number and number equaled music. Therefore, nature equaled music and all nature was musical. Wow! Let's take a look at what he thought of the nature in the heavens. That's what he called the harmony of the spheres. So what do we have? We have, as we heard before, 10 perfect spheres rotating in perfect circles. And these perfect circles were in perfect intervals, each of them in the perfect musical ratios. That meant that the distances between the planets were in perfect harmonious ratios. But how do we know that those big planets up there made sound? Well, I'll tell you what, Pythagoras knew that when things moved really fast, we could hear their sound. Kind of like when I throw this ball really fast. Whoa, look at that. Or better than that, did you hear that? Pythagoras deduced that all things that move must make sound. So since up there in the heavens, they were moving around, they must be making sound. And not just a little sound, big stuff would make big sound. And because all that stuff up there was distances of perfect musical ratios, and the planets that were moving faster were probably making higher notes, and the planets that were moving slower were making lower notes, up there we had big harmony. It must sound so beautiful to hear the harmony of the spheres. So why can't we hear it, especially if it's so loud? Why is it that we don't hear the harmony of the spheres? Pythagoras said, it's because we've been hearing the harmony of the spheres since before we were born. It's kind of like when you hear something over and over and over again. Like someone who works in a welding shop and doesn't hear the welding anymore. Or someone who's listening to their mom go on and on and on. They just stop hearing it. We tune things out. And when we tune things out, we just don't hear them anymore. That's what it's like with the music of the spheres. We can't hear the harmony because we've heard it all our lives. When we're completely silent, that's the closest we can be to hearing the harmonies of the spheres. But who can hear the harmonies of the spheres? Only those who are truly inspired. Only Pythagoras himself could ever hear the harmonies of the spheres. That is because Pythagoras was truly inspired. And that's all about the harmony of the spheres. Have a good day!